Hey there, once again, this is Terry Tandich Kimiak II, and this is the Theater Professor Vidcast. I want to thank everybody for stopping by my YouTube channel yet again with one of my uh, Procreate tutorials coming up. We're going to be talking about how to create your own brush in Procreate, uh, which is actually a lot of fun and allows for a little bit of creativity. What I want to say right now, though, is as you can see on my screen, that is the Theater Professor website. If you haven't already, stop by the website, sign up for our, our newsletter, and uh, keep up to date with our blog posts and our podcasts and our vidcasts. It's probably the best way to keep track of what's going on. I want to thank all of our subscribers already. We've surpassed 50, which I, I can't even believe it. It excites me. Uh, immensely to see people interested in what I'm doing with uh, uh, in the theater and what I'm doing with Procreate and and uh, some of the other some of the other programs that I use. So make sure you sign up. Enjoy this. If you want to see something specific, you let me know, and I will show you how to do it on Procreate or any of the other art apps that I have, which include things like um, Art Rage and Art Studio uh, and Sketchbook Pro and those sorts of things. Even Paper Fifty Three. So. Stay tuned and uh, enjoy another episode of The Theater Professor. And today what we're going to look at is we're going to look at creating our own brushes in Procreate. Now, this is something that you don't need to do. It's not something that is required. There are plenty of brushes that come with the program. And this is more for people who want to be a little creative and create things of their own liking. So what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to look at one of our brushes. So let's just pull up the shading graph. No, let's pick, pull up the oil pastel brush. And we're going to double tap it so it pulls into its settings. And the bottom right here, we're going to click on source. And what you've got there is, and, and we talked about this back in the uh, first Procreate tutorial, you've got your shape and you've got your grain. What you have to imagine is the grain sitting inside of the shape. So if you were to take that grain source and set it inside the shape, that is what creates our brush, our look as it's put down on paper. So if I'm going to take this, and yeah, I'm on a dark color, you can see, and that's just with one little tap. Let me see if I can darken it up a little bit. You can see we have our shape with our grain filling it in. So if we look back here at our brush, you can see the shape. Oops, let me do this. Move that there. Now I'll open this up. You can see the shape matches the shape source. Now, obviously, because I've hit it over, uh, I've had to hit it, uh, tap on the same spot several times so that it would be darken, uh, darken enough for you to be able to see it. The grain isn't quite as visible, but you can see a little bit of the grain showing within the shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own brush. So what we're going to do is the plus button up here, you're going to tap it. And now we have an untitled brush. Now, obviously, you can create whatever title that you want. We're going to call this um, just tester brush. You can name yours whatever you want, you know, like brush of awesome or coolest brush in the world, things like that. I don't know. Up to you entirely. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select a shape and select a grain. Now, sh there are some shapes and grain loaded into the program itself. So if I just tap on um, select shape, I can go into the pro library and you have, look at all these, shapes galore. And then just keep scrolling down. Now obviously these square ones are, are actually grains, but so let's pick a shape that, that I think will be fun to play with. Let's do this one right here. Okay, so that's the shape I've chosen. And then I'm going to select a grain again from the pro library. I'm going to scroll down to the grains that are down at the bottom. And I'm just going to pick, let's, uh, I'm going to pick these dotty ones right here. Okay, oops, we'll talk about, there we go, okay. So what we see in the top area here, right under tester brush, is what happens if using 
my shape and my grain source if I were to lay it down onto the paper. So let's zoom out a little bit. Now look at that, look at that, okay? Now, one of the things you can't see because of the, because of the um, grain that I've chosen is dots. You can't actually see it filling the space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change it to something that, oops. Change, change it to something that is a little more evident. Let's choose, um, like this one right here. Okay, so now look at that. So I've created essentially a custom, I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit, a custom pattern and shape. And you can go back in at any time, you can change your shape. So let's change our shape again from the Pro Library. Let's pick something like, um, something where we can really see the shape. This one right here. Let's make that bigger. Look at that. So here you can really see the shape and the grain within the shape. And anytime I go in and I switch any of those settings, we'll change our grain again. Let's change it to this one right here. This is a nice one. And if I do it right here, it's the same shape, but with a different grain within it. Okay. Now, you're probably asking yourself, well, this is really nifty, but it seems really limiting to only use what's in the Pro Library. Well, you can actually import your own grains and your own shapes. So, what I've done is I did a search. If you go into procreate.si, oops, there we go. Um, I found this uh, under the custom brushes form, 500 shapes for use as a brush. You click on the Dropbox link there, and there's a whole bunch of shapes that this user, who is this? This is um, wit33, he's, uh, he's gathered all of these different shapes. So let's let's pick one. Let's um I'm going to find one that is unique. Let's go with this right here. Look at that. That's nice, isn't it? What we need to do is we actually need to save it to our Dropbox. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download it. And actually, we don't even, uh, because I'm able to do it this way, I'm actually going to save it to my photo library, which is what I've done. When you press and hold and you click Save Image, it saves it to your photo library. So if I come back over here to Procreate and I select my shape, I can go to my photos. And I can change it to the tree. So now when I come in, You can see we've got a tree shape and then you can use that let's come down to here look at that now I'd, I'd probably go back in I'm going to change my grain Maybe something a little softer. What I have in there right now is is fairly hard. Something like this. There we go. Ooh. And you see when you drag. So this is very charcoal-y. I like this. Charcoal, charcoal crocket. King of the wild frontier. I know it doesn't make any sense. Okay. 
the other thing that you can do is just like you did with shapes if you know of places that have grains you can pull them too and I believe um, uh, I believe I saw in here that this link actually had some things that could be used as grains which is which is nice and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna look at some of the ones that could be grains rather than shapes um, let's see something like mm, like this right here that that could definitely be used as a grain so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click my download button I'm gonna press and hold and save the image come over here I'm gonna select a new grain oops and apparently it didn't like me doing that so here we go I'm gonna select a grain from my photos and now we have a, a new grain now okay so one of the problems I see with this grain notice these lines right here and right here what that means is this grain has not been created so that it um, it wraps around okay and so you get these hard edge lines because if we go back into here and we look at it the left side and the right side do not match up nicely and so we get this hard line that happens which unfortunately oops which unfortunately creates ugliness as you can see right there um, so one of the things that you have to do if you're going to create your own grain is make sure that it does wrap around okay go back in and and so some of the brushes that that I have managed to pull up that people have created um, if we look at and I'm actually going to delete that brush because I, I won't play with it much but I have a lot of downloaded brushes and you can look to see what other people have done so let's look uh, let's look at this Marlowe brush right here and if we look at the source you can see the shape and you can see the grain and that that creates that brush uh, let's see one of the ones I use a lot is uh, Nico's and let's look at his bull the shape and the grain I use his a lot because it gives a great rough texture oops there we go so what do you need to be able to do to create your own shapes and grains well obviously as you look at these pictures they are all black and white okay so your image needs to be a black and white image the other thing you can do is so for example if we look at this roll see how I clicked on it and it changed what is black and what is white that changes the brush So switch it back and same thing if you click on the grain it switches between what is actually being used as your pigment so and unfortunately I jumped ahead there so so what do you need to be able to do you would need to create black and white images so if we come back over here and we look at this Dropbox full of grains and shapes you can see that every oops everything is black and white now I've seen some people for example they will put a dab of watercolor paint on a piece of paper scan that in and turn it into a black and white and they use that um, some of these as you can tell for example these paint drippings those were probably actually done and then just converted to black and white same thing with these water splashes here 
So what you would need to do is you would need to take your image and convert it using Photoshop or GIMP or whatever um, image manipulating tool that you use. And then you can upload it into your Procreate program and use it either as a grain source or as a brush source. Well, that's it for today. This is a short one. Uh, this is um, the theater professor uh, vidcast. My name again is Terry Dana Jakimiak II. Now you can go ahead and create your own brushes. And um, if you create a brush, do me a favor. Uh, either um, leave a Dropbox link to it uh, if you don't mind other people downloading it or um, or a, uh, a link to the image um, because I'm one who loves to collect brushes if you look at my my brush palette here you can see I have one two three four I'm on my fifth page of brushes and I, I collect all sorts of them these are my fabric brushes that I pulled my shape brushes I have some texture brushes some great pen brushes the the super brush is really kind of cool and look how simple it is the grain and the shape very very simple brush but when you use it it does some great marker so so these are just you know these are some things that can be useful this has um, this must be on glaze because I'm building up layers so so yeah go ahead and leave leave a note let us know what you've been using and um, you know have a little fun create some create some things again this is Terry Danage came and this is the theater professor vidcast <laughs>